Hey everybody. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make what we call here at Mud Clay Studio in New Jersey, a sexy pot. Um, there's always a debate on whether it's a vase or a vase. So here at Mud, we call it a sexy pot. It's got all sorts of curves. It doesn't matter what kind of curves you put into it, but we call it sexy. So I'm gonna skip the whole centering part. I have plenty of other videos that talk about centering the clay. I wanted to focus more on the do's and don'ts of making a sexy pot, AKA a shaped uh, pot. So what a shaped pot actually is, or a vase slash vase, is a cylinder with some curves. The biggest mistake that people make to start is they start by just making it round and shaped from the very beginning. Whenever you create anything with a shape, a vase, a vase, a bowl, a teapot, anything, you wanna be concerned with creating your walls before you shape it. Shaping it is the last thing that you do. So I'm gonna start and my goal is to make something that kind of looks like a classic sort of um, Grecian shape. It's gonna go straight up. It's gonna have a shoulder, a neck, and then what I call sort of the head or the um, chin of the pot. So I'm starting with my clay centered at about uh, six inches. This is about two and a half to three pounds. Wheel going fast, I'm gonna go downstairs and push down with two thumbs. The minute my fingers get dry and I feel a little caca coming off, I'm gonna go ahead and wet my fingers. Now, I am not interested in putting a foot on this. I believe um, with certain shapes that you don't need to see the round, but you always need to see it lifting off the table. That's more of the aesthetics part of it all. So just for uh, video's sake, I'm gonna go ahead and check my bottom. My bottom is about uh, a half an inch, and I'm, I'm good with a half an inch because my wire tool is gonna take a little bit off, and I don't want my walls to be too thin. So if my foot is a half an inch, or a little less than that, three eighths of an inch, then that's sort of what I'm aiming for for my walls, maybe a little thinner. So I'm gonna open up like a cylinder. So I want the inside to be squared off, not round. So I do that with my wheel going fast, left hand back here, a bunch of fingers inside, and I pull straight towards me until I come out. So I'm going in and then I'm coming out. I don't wanna scoop. If I scoop, I may risk getting a rounded edge, which is not what I'm aiming for. Now, I want my end um, sexy pot to be narrow on the bottom, so therefore, I'm gonna open up my floor narrow. So what I'm actually doing is I'm gonna be throwing a cylinder that is about three and a half to four inches in width and diameter. I'm gonna do a little bit of a full hands collar. My left hand is here, my right palm goes to the side of my pot. Wheel going fast, I'm gonna push in and then I'm gonna curl over the top. Just a little bit of a claw like that. That keeps my width, this the proper width on the floor, but it tells the pot that eventually it's gonna be narrow. That's gonna be sort of where my neck is going to be. So now when I'm making a sexy pot, what I always wanna pay attention to is creating a volcano. I always tell my students, pretend that you're like, my end goal is a volcano. So the way that I'm doing that is that both hands are starting to aim for a spot right above the clay. I'm not doing just one hand. If I do just my outside hand, my lip, the top part's gonna get super thin. Start down on the bottom again, scoop up. Again, I'm aiming for that height first. Now remember, if I get this all the way up here, when I shape it, by expanding the width here, it's gonna get shorter. So keep that in mind when you're trying to figure out how much clay you want. Starting to slow my wheel down just a little bit to do the scoop on the bottom, get a little control and start to pull up with my hands attached, lip a little thicker and compress my lip. Okay, so at this point I wanna really start thinking about what I want my shape to be. If I want my clay to come all the way out here, I need this to be a little thicker because when it expands out here, that wall is gonna stretch. 
The biggest mistake that people make is they end up making their walls too thin and when they stretch it, it doesn't have the strength to um, hold the shoulder or the top or the head or the neck of the pot. So I really wanna keep in mind that if I want this to be round here, it cannot be too thin. But what I do wanna do is tell the clay that it's gonna start to become a little more narrow. So I'm gonna do what's called collaring. I do a six point collaring. Um, a lot of people, you'll see them, they just kind of grab their hand and they do this. If you are gonna do the full hand collar, you wanna make sure that your hands are attached. This is one tool, this is two tools. If you use two tools, one may, hand, may end up over here, one hand may end up over here. Plus, your fingers should be together. Each one of these fingers represents a different amount of strength. So if you're not even all the way with your collaring, you're gonna be giving your clay a little bit too much information. Okay, so with my six point collaring, I use my thumbs, my pointer fingers, and the space between my bottom knuckle and my top knuckle of my middle finger. All of these are gonna be on the same plane. Please excuse my broken finger there. They're gonna start all the way at the bottom, super wet clay, because we want it to glide and we're gonna go fast. We're gonna start at the bottom with our thumbs attached, fingers and knuckles on the bat. We're gonna start at the bottom, but we're not gonna do much until we get to the part that we wanna collar. So here we go. Remember your wheel's going fast, hands are wet, no pressure, no pressure, no pressure, no pressure, and then close those fingers up until you come off the top. A lot of people will just kind of start here. The problem with starting here is that your hand is actually gonna to start to push this down. But if we get what I call a running start, you're always going up. And you always wanna to remember to go up because the centripetal force wants it to go out. But you can see here that now my neck is thin. Now when I collared, that means I actually compressed the clay. So my wall that was three eighths of an inch is now a quarter of an inch. So when I do my next pull, I wanna really start to thin this out. This is actually gonna give us enough clay to have that neck. So I'm gonna start down on the bottom again. Now a little bit more pressure, get a little more height. And I'm almost just throwing a cylinder on the top of what I've created down on the bottom there. So now you can start to see the form that I'm considering shaping. I want to get a little bit more clay out of here so that I can jack this part up a little. So I'm going to be a little more aggressive down here, scoop it up, slow my wheel down a little bit so I can grab it, pull that clay up. And now I'm starting to insinuate my shape. I put a little bit more pressure on my inside hand. Now a little bit more pressure on my outside hand. And now I'm gonna go ahead and create that cylinder up on top, which represents my neck. And compress that lip. You may be able to tell by the sound of my wheel, I've slowed down a little bit. Now I'm looking at the inside and my inside is shaped like this. My outside is a little wider. I know that there's a little bit of extra clay here. Let me get my water, uh, water out of the inside while I still can. And I'm just gonna get a little bit more of a pull, but I'm gonna start to angle my hand just a little bit this much. So I'm putting some pressure down here, but almost none here. Because remember, I don't wanna get this wall too thin. I do have my head on the side, so I can now start to focus on the profile of my pot. I'm gonna get up here, I start to use my fingers to pull instead, and I go straight up. Now this shape right here is sort of um, a subtle, sexy pot. Um, she's got a little bit of a waist and then her shoulder and her her neck. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and collar this in a little bit more. Wheel super, play super wet, wheel going fast, start down on the bottom, hand going fast because the wheel's going fast. And now I'm going to start to get a little more aggressive as I get to the top. And don't worry, you're going to look at the top and it's going to start to look a little wonky. Don't stress, just continue all the way off. When I'm taking my fingers off, I kind of compare it to putting a card on the top of a house of cards. You put it down steadily, steadily, and then when it looks ready, you gently take it off. So you can see with the shape, it's starting to go out a little bit. My walls are my desired thickness. Go ahead and get the water out of the inside. And now I'm going to use just a metal rib. Uh, for years, I thought this was the most useless tool that it was. 
and now it's one of my favorites. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my metal rib to curl it and I'm gonna curl it like this so that I can only use one small part of it. What I'm actually gonna do is gonna sort of shape it and lift the clay up. So it's angled beveled towards me. My thumb is facing me. It's curled this way towards me. I have my hands on the inside and I'm gonna push the clay up against that rib and sort of define that shape that I'm aiming for. I'm gonna be able to stretch it out a little bit more. Now I'm gonna turn my hand, maybe take off a little bit of this slip. I'm gonna shape my hand, start to go in a little, create that shoulder and now I'm gonna go straight up. So what I did was I used this part to smooth out the edges, but then I used this to sort of mold my shoulder. Maybe I'm gonna go in and get a little more extreme down up on the top here, but again, I wanted to go straight up at an angle, stretch out, take a full grip again, and up. Now, um, what I wanna make sure that I'm doing is really thinking about the aesthetics of this. I want someone to look at this and go, oh, she didn't, she on, when I was designing this pot, I created this shoulder on purpose. This is a little subtle. Um, I'm gonna aim for letting the viewer know that I really wanted it to be this part, this part, and this part. So I do what I call a micro pull. I'm actually just gonna use my fingertips. I'm gonna start down on the bottom here, always starting at the bottom, even though I'm not doing anything right now. I wanna get that running start, come up here. Now I'm going to define my shoulder. I'm gonna use my right fingernail to really decide that this is the break. There's the law of thirds that I think is really important when it comes to creating a, a pot with a shape to it. Um, look it up, maybe I'll do a whole nother video about it. But very often when our pot is divided in half, it's really, it misses the dynamic um, that makes something relatively interesting. So at this point, I am going to call it a pot. I'm going to give her a little bit more of a, shul of a chin over here by having my right finger underneath my left finger really wet. And I'm just going to gradually push that over. For aesthetics, I don't want to push that all the way out here. I think it'll kind of lose that that interesting, narrow, wide, narrow look that I'm aiming for. A couple of things to be careful of is the speed of your wheel. If your wheel is going too fast, this shoulder may start to drop. The thinness and the thickness of your pot, if it's thick here and thin here, this will start to drop. And the biggest mistake that people make is when they're shaping it, they think they have to go really extreme. And then what happens is we get what we call the side boob, sort of the, the drooping pot. And if you aesthetically like that, that's fine. Um, I was trained that you always wanna make that pot look like it's lifting off of the table. So in order to reinforce that little off the table thing, I'm gonna take my wood tool, dip it in some water, and I'm gonna look at the inside. My inside does this, so I want my outside to do this. I shouldn't have to take off very much clay, just a little bit. Um, when it comes to certain sexy pots, they're very hard to trim. If you don't have a lip that it can stand on, you're gonna have to build a chuck. I find building a chuck to be annoying. So I try and take off as much as I can so that I do not have to do much trimming. Get a little bit more off. Now remember, your end game, your end goal is to have your inside look like your outside. And you don't really want to trim a lot. So the inside of my pot is shaped like this. So the outside of my pot is shaped like this. Our main goal always is to have evenly consistent walls. And then the aesthetics becomes the next part. It's something that lifts off of the table, aesthetically is balanced, shows a little interest and a little bit of tension. Aesthetics is always secondary. That's sort of pro tips. Um, but there you go, guys. There's a sexy pot.